Hello, Scott Clement here. I wanted to show you a quick tutorial of how to use a context menu on a 5250 subfile in Genie. Um, so some of the important things to start with, we, we are using the detect subfiles and detect subfile patterns options here in the Genie administrator. That is important um, because we're going to be relying on what, de what the detect subfile uh, patterns feature puts on the screen as part of the way we do this. All right, so I've got a skin where I've already set that up. I've set up those options and it's ready to go. I called it menu demo. You probably would just, you know, just use the, the genie skin that you normally do development on. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll create uh, something that uses this context menu in genie. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the skin. And what I'm going to do just uh, for a simple demo is I'm just going to do it on the work with spool file screen. Um, it doesn't matter. It should work on any sub file. Um, but that you know, this way I don't have to write an RPG program. We've already got this program, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it work with spool files. I'm just using the Q user user profile because that user always has a bunch of spool files on our system, usually job logs. Um, so you can see what's going on here. Hopefully, it detect the detect subfile patterns feature has turned this subfile into a grid widget. If I go into the designer, it's it's very important to see that this is an actual grid widget. When I highlight it, it says field type grid. It has grid properties at the top. It is a grid widget, and that's important because we're going to use some of the features of the grid to make this work. The basic idea of what we want to achieve today is we want the user to be able to select rows in the grid, right-click it, and get the same options that would have been up here. And then they can select the rows and choose one of these options, and it will put in the option next to it on the left automatically for them and press enter for them. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more like GUI like or web like with this right click menu. Okay? And again, uh, spool files are just an example. You probably do this in your own program uh, with your own subfile, but you know, this is just, just easy because we've got it already. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now you'll notice that whenever subfile patterns uh, creates a grid like this, it always names it subfile. You'll see the ID is named subfile. And that'll be important later when we're writing the code to process this because um, we don't have to um, pass in the name of what we're working with or anything like that. Um, it's always named subfile just because that's what the detect patterns always uses. It always gives it an ID of subfile. Okay? So anyway. Let's go ahead. What we're going to do is first of all allow the user to select rows. And that's done with a grid property called row selection. So I'm going to search here for row selection. Um, so I've got this. And I have the option to allow them to select only one row at a time or to select multiple rows. Um, I'm going to use multiple extended because that allows them to select multiple rows and do things like hit the shift key um, to uh, select more than one row at a time and stuff like that. It's, it's very similar to what you would use in something like um, Windows Explorer or something like that. Um, so it's it's something that people are familiar with already from working in graphical applications. So I've turned on that row selection that'll let them select rows and then the feature I want to use to allow the right click menu is called context menu. So when I search for that you can see I've got an option here called context menu ID and what that needs to be is it needs to be set to the ID of a menu widget. All right, so to go ahead and do that, I'm going to expand my widgets toolbar here, and I'm going to bring in a menu widget. So I'm going to go under menus, um, figure out which one of these I want to use. I'm just going to use uh, the classic one in this case, and I'll just drag it in here, and uh, that ID will go in my grid. So if I look at this, um, it's automatically given it an ID of menu one. I probably want a better name than that, so I'm going to change the ID to um, spool opt, spool opt being, you know, spool file options, just short for that, because um, that's what, you know, these, these are called up here as options. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm renaming it to spool opt, as you can see. Um, these, these are case sensitive, so since I put a capital O there, I need to remember to use capital O when I type it into the grid. So when I go to the grid property for that context menu, um, find that context menu ID, and I will set that to spool opt with the capital O the same way. Okay? So now that I've got that, this menu will come up when you right click on the grid. And the grid will take care of positioning it. So it doesn't matter where I put this. I'm actually just going to put it like over to the left or somewhere where it's kind of out of the way. And it'll also, the grid will automatically make it visible. Um, but I don't want it to be visible until they right click. So I'm actually going to change the visibility property of this menu to be hidden. So I've got to the menu properties again. Um, I found visibility. I'm going to change it to hidden. 
so that user won't see this menu until they right click on the grid. Okay, so that's all set up. The next thing we need to do is add in the options. So we've got these options up here, one send, two change, three hold, and that's what I want to have in my menu. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that under the choice, um, the choice options and choice, or sorry, choices and choice values uh, properties. So I'm going to, first of all, you know, it's, it's by default got option one, option two, option three, the things you see here. It's got those in there. So I'm going to get rid of those. I'm just going to right click and choose remove property value so I can start with a fresh slate. And then I'm going to bring up this editor and I'm going to type the things that I see over here. So send, change, hold, delete, display, release, messages, attributes, and work with printing status. Okay, so I've added all those options in there. And you'll see they show over here now, send, change, hold, delete, display, release, messages, attributes, and if I, you know, I'll stretch that out to make it the right height so that I can see them all at once and work with menu or work with printing status, they're all there. Now the numbers that we saw there, the one, two, three, four, I need to know what those are because our goal is actually going to be for the code for the menu to automatically sort of type that into these option fields and then press enter for the user. Okay, so I need, I'll need i need to know that and we'll just do that by putting it under the choice values. So these correspond, the first thing that I typed was send in the choices and so the first thing I want to type here in the choice values is going to be the number one. And then the second thing was change, so the second thing I'm going to type here is two. You can put these in a different order um, just so that you make sure the right number uh, goes in the same sequence as the right option that was selected, if you will. In this case, though, I typed them in the same order that are up here, which are, you know, 1 through 9. So I'm just going to put all the numbers from 1 through 9 right in there. And then I've got those. All right. So now I've got that. Um, and just to kind of see where we are so far, how, how we've gotten here, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my changes. So I'm going to... Um, first, I'm going to identify my screen, so whenever we see this string work with spool files up here in row 1, column 27, I want it to make these changes again, so I'm going to right-click that and choose Mark as Identifier, so it'll do that. And now I'll go ahead and click Save Screen, and it will save my changes. And I'll exit the designer, and we'll kind of see where we are. So now we should have the Row Selection feature. I should be able to select a row, um, potentially select multiple rows, so you can see one selected, but if I move the mouse down a little bit, hold down Shift on my keyboard, and click again it will select all those rows and if I right click it'll bring up the menu with all those different options wherever I right click so if I right click over there it's over there if I right click over here it's over here and so forth all right now what I haven't done is I haven't written the code to make these options work um, so I, I these options don't work yet but I mean we've done everything else we've made the widget come up and everything and it looks the way I wanted it to look so let's go ahead and make that work and the way that we're going to make that work, I'll go back into the designer here, is this menu here has a JavaScript function called onOptionClick. So onOptionClick is the name of the property. And we can write JavaScript code here um, that runs whenever you click an option. And if you look at the help down here, it also tells you down here that um, the value from the choice value property is passed in a parameter called value. And the text of what you selected is passed in a parameter called text. Now, I don't need the text parameter for anything, but the value is going to be the number. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to ask the grid which rows are selected. And it'll give us a number. So it may give us row 1 is not selected. So it will not give us the 1 in this example, but it'll give us 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, it'll give us those, those numbers in an array. And then we'll use that to calculate which of the option fields to type the choice value into. So the option field, if I click on that, you'll see the ID is I103, um, which means it's an input field in row 10, column 3. So if we can tell our JavaScript code that the first box in this grid is in row 10, um, then we can calculate based on the row number um, which box to put our options in. So if the second one is in row 2 and the first one is, is 10 you know we can add the 2 and the 10 and subtract 1 and we'll get 11 right so then it'll put the option in 11 or for this for this other one this is row 3 in the subfile um, it'll take 10 
plus 3 is 13 minus 1 is 12 and you'll see that when we highlight that that is indeed um, row 12 okay so we'll put that option in there for each row that they have selected based on that little calculation so let's go ahead and write the code um, because this is kind of a general thing that I might want to use in lots of different displays I'm not going to code it right in the widget but rather I'm going to make it a separate JavaScript function um, that I can just call from any display that wants to use it um, and an easy way to do that is just to add it to the custom JS file for my Java skin or, not Java skin uh, genie skin uh, so let's go ahead back to the genie administrator we've got an option here to edit custom JS and I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to add a new function in here um, so way at the bottom here I'm going to add in my new function it's going to call this I'm going to call it process menu option so function process menu option and then I'm going to take some parameters to this function so first of all I'm just you know I'm just kind of closing off my function so I don't forget to do that and then I'm going to take parameters so the first one will be the value so that'll be the option that they've selected one two three four five six seven eight nine on um, the second one will be the first row of my subfile so I'm going to call that sub start you know that's that's uh, the first row of the subfile or subfile start or sub start is what I called it and then I'm also going to need to know what column that option field is in so column will be a parameter okay so what I'm going to do in my function here is I'm going to get that subfile and then I'm going to figure out which rows are selected in it and put all those option numbers into the right places okay so I'm going to get the subfile. I just I'm just declaring a JavaScript variable named subfile. I'm using the profound UI get object um, API, and that'll get my widget. The widget is always called subfile. Again, that's just the way the the uh, the genie feature detects subfile patterns and always names the the subfile. It always just names it subfile. So I don't need to have options for different names because it'll always be called that. Um, and then I'm going to have an array which I'm going to call cell. It's just short for selections. Um, it's just uh, going to be an array that the, I can ask the grid for. So subfile, again, was the variable from the line above. That is my grid. It's got a grid object in it. And then I can call get selected rows API. And this will return this array. So now cell, after that line of code, will have the array with all of the different rows that were selected. So what I want to do is loop through those rows. And I want to um, set the field name you know for the input field to whatever option was selected so to loop through them I'm going to do a for loop and I'm going to declare a, a variable named I just short for you know index for loop index and I'm going to loop through the full length of my array of selections so that's you know just loops from uh, it'll start with zero and then go until the length of the array and then each time through add one to i. So that's how that works. Um, so for each row that was selected I need to calculate what that input field name would be. Remember they were i10 3 for the first one, i11 3 for the second one and so forth. So I've got this parameter I'm going to pass in the first row that is used so 10 in our example and then we'll, we'll calculate what the name would be based on uh, which rows are selected which will be in the cell array so I've just got a variable named field and I'm just going to be set to that I oh, okay I underscore sorry about the typos um, and then I'm going to figure out the subfile start so sub start plus the row that was selected which is cell I um, and that'll that'll actually give me a number that's one one number too high because subfile start is 10 um, but the first row selected will be 1, and 10 plus 1 is 11. I actually want 10, so it should be, you know, that number minus 1. So that number minus 1, and then I will take that number and convert it to a string. So I'm going to use JavaScript's string feature to convert that into a character string. And so it's going to take i underscore, um, and then add that string onto it. So i underscore followed by the row number. And then the last thing I need um, is to add the column number on it. Remember, it's i103. Um, so the column number will always be the same, so I'm just going to add that column number that was passed as a parameter to our function. So this now is a string containing the field name. Um, and now that I've got that, I can set that. So I'll use the PUI set API. This will set um, 
the value of a widget to a value. So I'm going to set that field name that I calculated to the value that was passed in as a parameter to this function. And that should go ahead now and set all of those. So now all the rows um, after this function runs would be set to the option that was selected. The last thing that I want to do is I want to press the Enter key. Um, but I only want to press it if at least one row was selected. So what I'll do is I'll count how many rows were selected. I'm just going to make another variable named count, which will start at zero. And then for each row that was selected, I'll add one to that. So plus plus adds one. And so when this row is when this uh, loop is done, count will be the number of rows that were selected. And then I'll press enter only if the count is greater than zero. So if at least one row was selected, I'll press press the enter key using the Genie API called press key, which presses you know the enter key. Okay. So hopefully I didn't make any bugs in my code there. I mean, if I do, I'll go back and fix them or whatever, but hopefully I didn't. So I've gone ahead and typed that in. I'll click Save up here, so that'll save the changes to my custom JS file. It says that it's been saved now. Um, and then I'll go back to my Genie session. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Refresh button in the Genie Designer. And what that'll do is it'll reload that custom JS file. So now that custom JS file has been loaded into memory um, with my function that I just made. And now I can use it. So I'll go back into the Genie Designer. I'll select my menu. And I'll find that um, on option click, on option click option here. And then I will just have it call that. So process menu option is what I called it. Um, and that is case sensitive. I need to make sure I type that correctly. Um, profound UI will automatically have declared the value. As it says in the help down here, it's going to declare something called value. So I'll pass that value in. And then I need to pass the subfile start. So remember this first input field here was I103, so I want to pass 10 for the subfile starts in row 10, and then the option is the option field is in column 3. So I'll pass that in. And so that's done. Um, and then I'll save my changes. And let's try it out. So I'll go ahead and, and right click on this and choose display. And you may have noticed really quick there that it put a 5 in there and pressed enter. You could see the 5 and then it processed it and, and I've displayed my, my, uh, subfile. So, or I've displayed my spool file, I should say. So, so that, uh, seemed to work fine. Um, so that's just to make sure it works with multiple rows and so forth, let's try selecting a bunch. I'm going to try selecting them in the middle. So I'm going to select this one by clicking it. And I'm going to go down a few rows and cl click again with, uh, holding down the shift key. It's selected now four rows. And then just for the sake of demo, I'm going to right click and choose the uh, hold option. And it should change the status for those four to hold, to held. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see it did indeed work. It set those to held. And then I'm just going to do the same thing again. You know, select them all by holding down shift and clicking. And then I'm going to right click and do release to put them back the way they were. And you can see those rows changed to release. So, in fact, my, my uh, context menu seems to be working. I should now be able to use this to do whatever I want to do in my subfile. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you find it useful.